There's a saying to imagine everyone in their underwear to overcome situations where everyone seems to be judging you. Ironically, the real deal for me was when everyone was literally naked. A Korean experience my own Korean mother wanted to keep me from was the sauna or the bathhouse, which are both very commonplace activities in Korean culture. But she felt that it was something unnecessary and uncomfortable for her to have experienced as a young girl. So I took her word for it. If the op opportunity ever came up with relatives or anything, I planned to politely refuse. And this opportunity did come up one day um, during my trip to South Korea. One day, following this boat trip, everyone went to this one room to wash up. But when I walked in, I was unaware and completely unwarned that it would be a large communal space, meaning that the showers were open and everyone would be fully naked. And calling this a culture shock would be an understatement. At first, I didn't know where to look, and I felt embarrassed and out of place. But eventually, I no noticed how everyone seemed calm and unbothered, so I adjusted to the environment. And today, I understand that this was an experience that became liberating. There's a war of pride, honor, and status that exists within the Asian American community. And it encompasses this hierarchy of standards that can be met through cutthroat competition and fleeting facades. And the collectivistic aspect of Asian American culture often hinders people from allowing themselves to be fully seen. Yet the seemingly contradictory solution to these issues is the call to be vulnerable. And what really fascinated me during that first trip to the sauna for me was the amount of vulnerability and exposure that everyone seemed fine with. And this radically contrasted my preconceived notion of what Korea looked like. And the general ambiance of that sauna was a mix of indifference, but acceptance. Yet in its physical manifestation, a person's most vulnerable form is in their nakedness. So if everyone can be so vulnerable at a sauna, what makes it so difficult for our Asian American community to be vulnerable in all these other contexts? Vulnerability, vulnerability is supposed to foster belonging which just might be why our Asian American community struggles to foster that same sort of belonging and acceptance. And this might be attributed to something called nunchi. Now, nunchi is this fascinating concept that Korea has of reading the room or social cues. It refers to sensitivity and awareness. But it goes deeper than that, as it's the skill that measures how well you can act upon the awareness of other people's unspoken thoughts and emotions without being told what to do. So saying that someone has a good sense of nunchi is a compliment to their emotional intelligence. But in the larger picture of our Asian American community, um, the, everyone's own sense of nunchi translates to this larger subconscious concern of public image and maintaining some sort of impressive persona. But if we could instead utilize this collectivistic aspect that we have in our culture, to shift towards fostering acceptance and belonging, how much liberation could our next generation experience? Now there's something else in Korea called sunung, and it's this eight hour exam that's said to make or break your future with college acceptances, your career, your circle of friends, and essentially your entire future. And during that testing day in November, everyone gets involved in the country. There's police escorts, there's um, emergency vehicles that are ready to transport students that might be running late. There are stores and banks adjusting their opening times, and even planes that adjust their flight hours just to adjust to these um, schedules for the testing students. And it's very intense, and the average Korean student in their senior year will be studying up to 16 hours a day, which I thought had to be an exaggeration. But if you consider how they go to school from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., then go to an after-school academy until 10 to 11 p.m., and then go home and self-study until about 1 a.m., it does add up to about 16 hours. And it's that intense. And that's a part of the system and a part of the culture. And then there's something else, another unique concept that Korea has called jung. And jung refers to the special emotional connection you can have with a person or the social bonding of a community. And in the context of our Asian American society, 
a barrier to this Zhang just might be that competitive nature that we have, like we see from the Suning test, and seeing your, uh, seeing your neighbors as your enemies. But my linear understanding of a Korea that only valued glamour and unrealistic standards for people was shaken by my, my sight of a Korea that held a space that embraced this norm, even within a sauna, that allowed people to be seen and feel safe. And allowing yourself to be seen is the first step to accepting yourself. So today, I encourage you to envision a community that encourages deep diving past superficial looks and applauding those who refuse to hide behind their egos. And the needs of our community can only be helped when its weak spots are addressed. And in these small ways, we can promote inclusion to ultimately create a culture of acceptance of people in their rawest forms. Thank you.